Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back, uh, Dr. Omar. Um, so yeah, YouTube, I think, is beginning to play with some of my videos. So I need mm -hmm. to um, talk about other subjects uh, a little bit more often for now till, um, mm -hmm. till you know, they, um, I guess, put me in the gray area back again. They, so, they, they object to some things, have they? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, I'm getting they, a hint. They touched I'm... me three years ago, I think. Now <laughs> it closed me down. <laughs> yeah, so like people advised me not to use certain words and to be careful. When I start seeing like, you know, one of the ways to know it is if you monetize your channel and they're not monetizing you, then or they're too much monetizing you, then you know that they're not. They don't like you at that point. Oh, but anyway, I see. Yeah. I see. Well, I never received a dime from them, and I've had had well over 1.5 million hits. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, that ought to tell you something. So anyway, I we know who we're dealing with there, and yes. it is called the beast. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> now, that's a yeah. that's a key word. There we go. So, inshallah, uh, where do we want to go today? So let's talk about family life. Family uh, life. Yes. Okay. Uh, in your book, uh, you give a very, mashallah, beautiful parable that mm. ever since I read it, it's been as an image in my mind. Oh, good. And uh, that is that, you know, you talk about how the sperm is lodged into a safe place in the biology or the the lady mm -hmm. the wife and in the same way the husband offers her protection in mm -hmm. her house meaning in her house inside her house yes she, this this is safe. this is tawhid yes this yes. is an evolutionary of a tau this is the evolution of a tawhid concept yes so that was very uh interesting example that mm -hmm. you gave and so and then you also talked about in your book um, something, uh, something to the nature of when women, you know, try not to be women, I guess, when you were referring to when they take certain pills or drugs, that affects them, that affects them. And uh, so what I wanted to talk to you about is a female's identity as a female. And why do you think women are not comfortable in their own skin as women, as wives. Um, well, I don't, I don't know if you have something to say about that, but I know that you touched upon that at least to some degree in your book in a sense that, again, referring to the tawheed that you're referring to, that if you're not working according to the, the order Allah has set, mm. then that will bring about its consequences. Yes. So I want to know from you, what do you think about the feminists, feminist movement or the feminazis, as I sometimes call it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Nazi is a word that derives from the Hebrew word for high priest, which is Nazi, oh. N-A-S-I. So what we're dealing with there is uh, a, um, a, 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 a pagan derivative of the Babylonian priesthood, because that's what the rabbinical um, uh, inference really uh, is in the long term. And when you pick up the Babylonian paganry, I mean, if you study their Kabbalah, they are not worshiping Allah at all. Hmm. Their, their um, monotheism is complete uh, pretense because they have a deus concept and uh, then their emanations coming from the Godhead, if you will, uh, it, it constitute lesser gods. Hmm. So when they're talking about certain uh, 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 entities, they're talking, they're equating other entities which they have imagined with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Hmm. And then when you go further into this, you realize that their Adam. Their Adam is a male female entity. Mm. Okay. And it's called Adam Kadman. Okay. 
So this is the beginning of the sexual identity confusion. It begins with the Jews. Hmm. And uh, this, I mean, the dissemination begins with the Jews. The concept is pagan before the Jews picked it up. I mean, it, it goes back to uh, ancient India and Dravidia. So it can be traced to uh, where Pakistan is right now and southern India, where those Dravidians spread out from there. They sent their religion into the Babylonian Sumerian uh, uh, Akkad kingdoms, and uh, it then was picked up when the Jews went into captivity because they're interested in all these sorts of things. Mm. And so they have. They then imagined that uh, Adam was two sexes uh, before he uh, Eve was taken out of him. And they don't stop for a moment to think that Eve is a new creation, okay? Uh, look, look at it this way. Adam was taken from the earth, okay? And he was formed from the earth, and Eve was taken from Adam and then mm -hmm. formed as a female. So uh, there's not something missing from Adam, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But they're, that's what they're saying, uh, and that's what they believe in the higher realms of the uh, occult uh, world, uh, those who believe in their Kabbalah and practice that magic, and magic it is, because then once they get into that, they begin to summon the demons, and the demons quite happily respond. Mm -hmm. And they've been deluding them ever since, just like the Quran says they would, and uh, they're given over to this strong delusion. And they're going to hold on to this delusion until the moment of death. Okay. Mm. And then that when they return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this thing will dissolve. Until then, they, it is everything that they believe. Okay. Mm. Uh, and they are spreading this. Uh, by means of, uh, you know, the, 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 the modern world system and media and everything. So this is a war on what Allah has created from the beginning. Adam is male, Eve is female, a complement. They are not something which were joined together. Eve is completely separate. So mm -hmm. just as Adam was created from the earth, his body was created from the earth. That same earth <laughs> was used to create Eve. It was just simply taken out of Adam. Right. But they're saying, and then they, they project this whole imagery into the Godhead. Okay. And they say that Allah is male and female. Hmm. Okay. So this is at the root of the entire confusion. Okay, it's a bit more sophisticated than that, but I just want to reduce it to the archetype because that's what's important here. So all of this is proceeding from ancient pagan religion, which the Jews picked up in the Babylonian captivity and which they gave themselves over to. And this has to do with the hermetic tradition. Uh, the Hermetic derives from the term called her, uh, that they use for Hermes, and Hermes was a bisexual god that began in the city of, um, I think it was Ur, or one of those uh, cities. Anyway, one of the cities close to where Abraham had his disagreement with his father. Okay, and uh, this Hermes is now the symbol for the Caduceus. Okay, it's a male and a female snake copulating. That's what it is. Mm. Okay, yeah. and it represents the god Hermes, which is also called Mercury. Mm. And so this god, uh, this is the same Hermes, symbol that's used in hospitals and in the medicine. Yes, yes. Most of the people have who use this symbol, and even who ascribe to the Hermetic tradition, have no idea that Hermes was a bisexual god. Hmm. And again, this is taken back to ancient Hindu beliefs, uh, which then uh, had, uh, by, by means of merchant trade and whatnot, that religion went to the ancient Akkadians, who were much more sophisticated, ancient Akkad and Sumer, what they were much more sophisticated than people give them credit for. Most of ancient Dravidia is under the sea now, off the Pakistan shore.
Mm. And it's it's out of sight, out of mind. It's mm. very difficult archaeological work, and under the present political circumstances, it's not going forward. So nobody knows about these things. Mm. I read about them twenty years ago. Oh. So, um, uh, and I I sent you one of the books uh, I think on this uh, uh, a while back. Anyway, I sent well, I sent you the link. Anyway, so what we're talking about here is pagan mystery religion made into a popular cultural icon called the feminazi okay mm. all right these women are completely deluded and they're completely separated from their true nature mm. by this ideation okay uh my wife god be praised has none of this in her okay uh and she is her own autonomous being, uh, just as I am my own autonomous being. We have our separate worlds, yet we live together in harmony. Mm. If I enter her kingdom and try to take over, God alone can help me. Mm. <laughs> okay? And it's the same if she enters my world and tries to exert her authority in my kingdom. She can't do it. Mm. Because I will thrash her with my tongue, mm. okay, <laughs> and um, so and she will do the same to me if I enter her queendom, okay. Mm. So uh, if we together, as long as we keep to our boundaries and we meet at these boundaries, and then we mesh at these boundaries, all is well. You see, even in the enmeshment of my fingers here. You see, boundaries are maintained. Hmm. There's no, there, there's no, this finger cannot enter this finger. This hand cannot enter this hand. All right. We work together as a complementary team. And hmm. that is how it is. So there is no female in me any more than there is any male in her. Hmm. The whole thing is a lie. Hmm. And it begins with the religion of Shaktism, and it went to, to Babylon. It was taken up there, and oh, you have all these kings and gods and sons and daughters of God, and now you have the mother of God, and she's the queen of heaven, and the ultimate mother of God here is <laughs> the mother goddess called Sibyl, who we can trace back to Shakti and then forms of Kali, okay? Mm. Shaktism is the ancient mother goddess brought mm. into some sort of a personification of certain aspects of the Godhead. That's what they want to uh, want people to believe. So Sibyl then became the Godhead I mean, the goddess, the mother goddess in the ancient Greco-Roman world. She was situated in what is now Turkey, in Ana ancient Anatolia. And she became, uh, when they adopted this system uh, into the Christianity uh, in after the 19 Nicene Creed, then she became the mother goddess, Constantine, actually took her idol, I think I told you this before, actually took her idol, took it to uh, Constantinople, and had it reshaped as the mother of Isa. Mm. Okay? And then he told everybody, this is the mother of Isa. Mm. The Romans did pretty much the same thing with their goddess, uh, Rhea. And uh, so we have this uh, mother goddess system, and the Sibyl was an androgyne. Okay, she was born a male, then castrated, and then she gave birth to her own son, who became her lover. <laughs> Does this sound, somehow uh, connect with Paul? Because Paul says something in his writings about you know there is no male, no female, no Jew, no Christian. You probably can. <laughs> Paul, yeah, Paul. Paul uh, let me, people need to read my book on the Gospel of Barnabas. It's called The, uh, oh, we're definitely the, for, the Forgotten we're Saints. That. There's no doubt. The Forgotten Saints. Now, I wrote it uh, years and years ago now, and I wrote it as, the, uh, as a re 
request. I didn't know anything about it, you see. But Professor Osman Bakar, who once sat the chair at Georgetown University for Islamic studies, asked me to write the book. Okay. Mm. Now, I'm no expert in ancient studies, so all of this was new for me. Look, I'm just a doctor, okay? I'm a curious doctor. I go beyond the realms of medicine because if you want to practice medicine, you have to be holistic. Mm. You can't be uh, a reductionist. Most mm -hmm. of your today, today's doctors are reductionists. That's right. So I expanded my knowledge and I said, okay, well, to be a doctor, you have to be a good detective. And Osman Bakar, God bless him, said, you're a doctor. That makes you a detective. Now go find this stuff. <laughs> So I, I said, okay. So I began searching and I wrote uh, the book and uh, it's just a little book. But from what I understand of my research in that realm and from what I know about Paul and the New Testament and how everything has been uh, confused by interpolators, by liars who have added to the Injil, who have added to the al Torah, and who have confused things. The Paul that we know cannot be the Paul who wrote some of these things. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so there, there have to be two Pauls. Uh, one is a speaker of truth. The other one is a liar. And they're mixed together in, in the Testament. They're mixed together, all, all this stuff. So it, it, on one hand, Paul said something that's just wonderfully and totally beautifully true. And on the other hand, he says something like you just mentioned. There are no angels. There are no uh, male, no female. Well, this is nonsense. That's that's just uh, Gnostic nonsense, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and this is getting back to the Kabbalah. So just and, for reference, it's in Galatians 3.28. Yes. Gonna, there is no Jew or Greek. There is uh, no longer slave or free. There is uh -huh. no longer male and female, for uh, all of you are one. Uh, no, God. this is yeah. No, this is monism. Okay, <laughs> and this is kabbalism that goes back to the ancient Hindu belief that we all just uh, reach nirvana and become reabsorbed in a great, nameless, unconscious monad <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's going through the co intercosmic space like a, some gigantic amoeba. And mm. this is supposed to be God, okay, or Atman, okay? Mm. It, all of that is nonsense. It's just mm. utter nonsense, okay? I fully expect to, to meet Black Elk, all right? The monotheist, God willing, the monotheist Lakota uh, uh, priest, if you will, or shaman. I fully expect to meet him as a Lakota in heaven, mm. okay? I don't expect, so, you know, uh, and I, I suppose that, you know, as we imagine, and as we have been told bits and pieces from various of the prophets and uh, various of the the great scholars who have had glimpses of um, uh, the great beyond, the hereafter, uh, I imagine there's going to be nations there just like there are nations here. Mm. OK, because what is above is below and vice versa. And the Quran makes it very, very clear that what we experience here, we're going to experience there, but far more exquisitely. Mm -hmm. So you just throw all that nonsense away. It's just something that was interpolated in the NGO, which is lost, by the way. Mm. <laughs> there are bits and pieces of it here and there uh, throughout the Middle East. Uh, there are some in the Coptic libraries and some of the private churches. They don't even know what they have. Okay. Mm. One, one, one priest, Coptic priest, was confronted last year with a manuscript in his own library that has no mention of the resurrection, no mention of the ascension of Jesus. <laughs> mm. See, no mention of any of these things. And he says, well, we just don't talk about it. <laughs> Yes. That's yeah. That's part of confirmation bias. Okay, 
because uh, <laughs> uh, when when I became a Muslim, I became the en enemy of my people. I was thrown out of the Christian church because I spoke the truth. The pastor actually acknowledged that it was the truth, you mm. see. So, but he removed me from my position as a uh, as an honored uh, teacher, mm. okay, for destroying their culture. Mm. You see, the truth will destroy will destroy a culture that is based on a lie, and this Christian culture that we now confront, that is now actually carrying on the crusade, because even though mo many of these people who uh, fly these drones and kill the innocent people are not practicing Christians, it is a Judeo Christian culture that is built on a lie that is prosecuting this war. Mm. It's prosecuting the crusade for Rome, which has taken up the Babylonian mantle of this entire system of pagan lies. Okay. Dr. Omer, can I ask you a question? Okay. So yes. we have this Babylonian kind of like the, the Magi, right? Mm. Mm. And then we have this same ideas or similar ideas with the assassins later on. Yes. In the Muslim world, or it was carried on in the Muslim world. The protocol, did they, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did they try to upset nature as they have now in the past? Like the, the Magi's, I can see it in the writings of Paul, like sentences like this, which people can then philosophize and... Mm. Have, have no, they tried to upset... No, the assassins, the assassins were, not, were not interested. The Ishmaelis... Yes. Uh, the Batonites who were involved in that movement as a result of a Jew, of a Jewish Magi, who mm. was connected, directly connected to the Yazids who worship mm. Satan, okay, yeah. as, a, as a serpent, okay. Don't believe they don't. <laughs> they made a deal with Satan, just like the Jewish Kabbalists make a deal with Satan. And I believe that because the prophet said you'll, you'll do whatever they did. So yeah. that's the, that I'm, I'm trying to see. Mm. What they're doing now, which by upsetting the social order, if they've tried to do this in the past. Yes. If you want to upset the social order, you have to divide the husband from wife. Okay. And this whole idea of the woman in me and the, the, man, the man in my wife is doing that. You see, and subhanallah, that because verse in the Quran that talks about this, magic, the, the, it's it's a lie. Yeah, that verse that talks about magic, uh, ayah number yes. one or two of Sultan Bakr, that's what it talks about. That you farikuna that that they taught magic to specifically uh, divide the male from the female. Yes, this so, is destru this destroys divine order. This destroys okay. divine order. It destroys divine order. Even if the man and woman stay together, if you have if you're married to a feminazi, you don't have a true marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have something that resembles a marriage, but you do not have this. Yes, okay? you, don't. you do not have the complementar complementarity because that complementarity actually penetrates to the subatomic level, mm. and it affects everything in your being. Mm. So that people who are married happily married as true wife as true woman and as true man as true male okay they are healthier they live longer they have less diseases less illnesses they are more successful in whatever they do be it great or small it doesn't mm. matter they mm. have a greater satisfaction in life mm. this is the point no matter high or low Okay, on the social uh, scale, you cannot measure this divine order, mm. but in terms of material success, and mm. that's a mistake. So, uh, this whole thing is destroying the divine order, that's what it is. And when you have uh, this, uh, uh, this penetration of the popular culture with this esoteric nonsense, this Gnosticism. Uh, it is creating havoc, and it continues to create havoc. And this is a, another reason why it says that your women will run after the beast, okay, mm. when he appears. 
Okay, we'll just mention him in those terms. Yes. Um, uh, so, because he's a manifestation, you can call him the, the head of the beast, okay, if you will. Uh, so, uh, and so th th this, this is destructive of the divine order. That's what we're dealing with here. Women don't understand it. Men don't understand it. Everybody's confused about this thing because you have all these so-called experts coming and presenting themselves at talks in Oxford centers and, you know, Princeton and God knows where else. And they're, they're, act, they're talking about things in psychological terms that absolutely make no sense in the true esoteric um uh, monotheistic uh cosmological perspective if I you to, don't i yes. want to bring up something carl jung said in his uh, mm -hmm. autobiography <laughs> great and, the great carl jung. Mm. yeah i want to know what you say about that because it was something that i read and i was like hmm, that's interesting and uh i to some degree internalized it I want yes. to now at this point check uh, if you would agree or disagree, and if I should uh, modify my thinking, uh -huh. said, observations was is that as men became older, they became more feminine, and as women became older, they became more masculine. Well, this is a there is an element of truth there but it is not what you would expect it to to be in terms of gender okay mm. in terms of assimilation of traits from your partner yes but it's not an evolution of these traits it's an assimilation mm. okay and um if you if you look for example uh, look at many of the uh, people who become priests or cl or clerics, whether they be Anglican or Protestant or Catholic or uh, whatever. These men are never masculine in appearance. Hmm. They've always been soft. They've always been somewhat effeminate. Okay. And as hmm. they get older, they remain that way. Hmm. Okay. So, and the same is with uh, uh, women who become the, the strong-hearted nuns, okay, the fierce nuns mm. uh, uh, under the collar. They were never truly feminine to begin with. Mm. They were always somewhat masculine. This mm. has something else to do with uh, uh, something. Let me explain this in terms what ju that Jung uh, overlooked. Because it's not true. I just showed you it's not true across the board. Okay. Uh, so he's trying to make a general statement and, and express it as a truth that fits everybody. And it doesn't. Mm. Okay. What this fits is the complementarity. All right. That I'm speaking of. Okay. Because over time, two people who truly love each other begin to resemble each other. They actually begin to look like each other. Oh, subhanAllah. Okay, yes. Okay. Now, that's a miracle that manifests because this complementarity is working at the subatomic level to actually alter their gen genetic expression. Hmm. It's not altering the code. The code's already there. You see? What we know about the genetic code is represents about 95% of what, 5% uh, of what's actually there. Mm. And they called a lot of this undefined DNA, they called it junk DNA, and they're finding out now that they're wrong, just like they were wrong about in, immunizations. Okay? I think they call it epi, epigenetic. Well, right? there's, there's epigenetics, but there's also junk DNA or mm. DNA, DNA okay. that we don't know about. Mm. Okay. What I'm talking about is, is the expression of that gene, of those uh, genes uh, that remains uh, unexpressed if you don't have this complementarity, if it's not there. Now, there's a certain element of truth that, yes, as, uh, as uh, women get older, they begin to look like uh, men. 
I remember when I dissected my first corpse hmm. as a as a medical student. I thought it was a man. When we got down to the genital genital region, it <laughs> was a female. Okay. Okay. Everybody was fooled. We thought it was a man. Hmm. Okay. Because she had lost the outward expression of the feminine uh, mm. uh, charm, which she was born with. But that doesn't mean that she became a, a, a man inwardly, okay? Mm. So this is something that expresses, that, that's expressed materially. And Jung is making a material observation here, and it's an objective observation that uh, he subjectifies by what he wants to project onto this as some sort of meaning. Mm. And this meaning, it goes back to what I was just describing as the Gnostic aspect of the uh, pagan religions that considers God to be male and female, mm. and the first man to be male and female too, according to the uh, Jews. All of that is nonsense. Okay. I, I remember like even about maybe 10 years ago, mm. our local Christians, not Jehovah Witnesses, just local Christians from their local church in our own neighborhood came yeah. knocking on our door. I thought it'd be Jehovah Witnesses because I always have fun talking to them, mm -hmm. but it, it wasn't. And they were talking about how the Bible says we, and they were interpreting the we to mean male and female together. And this is- yes, yes. You know, Christian, yeah. the local Christians and, of the church. Yeah. All, all of those, all of those uh, uh, Jehovah's Witness and the Mormons, they're offshoots of this Kabbalah nonsense. They're just infiltrations, the result of infiltrations by Gnostic uh, 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 Jews or people who have become influenced by them. Okay, so uh, I hope that explains the some the basis for this confusion. So, Dr. Omer, on the one side, you have stories like Cinderella mm -hmm. or, or Ariel or... Oh, uh, I'm 70 years old now. Do I look uh, feminine to you? <laughs> <laughs> you see, he's a liar. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we can put Jung to rest along with all his philandering. You know, he set the example oh, yeah. uh, for a, a, a runabout, a gadabout, uh, you know, uh, just a pursuer of women, uh, all to, you know, his poor wife had to put up with this, you know. So yeah. his example was anything but honorable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, he was a brilliant man. Some of his ideas are wonderful, but Lucifer is also brilliant. Yes. Isn't he? Satan is brilliant. <laughs> Let's not be fooled. Okay. So on so, the one side, we have these stories of Cinderella. On the other side, we hmm. have the same culture is, is, has these, especially once you get to the university setting, you have these hmm. like gender studies about, you know, women rights and, 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 and they talk mm -hmm. about history and, and, and the rights of the women and, yeah. you know, making women and men the same, not even equal, but kind of like almost the same. It's communist. That's all it is. It's just communist. They're the levelers. Uh, they want to do away with divine order, make clear the board, make everybody equal so that their secret uh, autocracy, these plutocrats who are actually practicing Luciferians and and uh, Satanists can have a field day with all of humanity. That's what they want. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, what they're doing is just destroying the divine order with all of these dialogues. They have no idea what they're talking about, but they have an open door. They're justified in their approach. And I'm going to explain why. They're justified in their approach because Men, both East and West, have not treated their women with justice. And okay. I think that's a very just statement, that that is a reaction. And it's some a reaction. Women, and some people yeah. have taken advantage of that. Yes. To, yeah, to that's, what we're, that's what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So uh, unjust men, male chauvinists in particular, have invited this. You look at the Christian uh, ethic, 
with respect to the treatment of women, well, my God, they were slaves. Hmm. Okay, a, a few hundred years ago, you could go to a public market market in England or even in America and sell your wife. Hmm. Okay, you know this is. No wonder the women are revolting. I don't blame them. They have every right to do so. Mm. Okay, because as, if they're if they're joined to an unjust male chauvinist, yes, of course. That is why another reason why the prophet said, "In those end days, just men are going to be so few that forty or fifty women are going to say, give me your name, give me your name. I don't have to beg you. Just give me your name.'" Mm. You see, because the name offers protection. It mm. offers honor. Okay. Mm. She can walk down the street and she say, and she can say, I'm Dr. Omar's wife, mm -hmm. number 13. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I'm serious. Uh, yeah. I had, I, I, let me give you an experience. Now, my wife is an attractive lady. And when I first, when I was working at the University of, um, uh, Islam in uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, I was giving a lecture and she came to pick me up and she went to the, and, and sat in the, uh, uh, the rece reception room. Uh, and she was approached by one of the professors and she, and this professor started flirting with her. Mm. Okay. And, uh, and, and so, and so, uh, and so she, she, she went, she, you know, went along with him out of, courtesy more than anything else. I mean, this was a very um, uh, 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 respectable uh, uh, venue. So she didn't want to make a, a fuss or anything. And so when he finally got around to asking her what she was doing there, she said, I am waiting for my husband. You mm. see? And she said, and he said, who's your husband? And she said, Dr. Omar. Mm. And he immediately turned tail, you know, and, and walked away. You see, that's protection. You understand? That's what we're talking about. And women are not feeling protected, okay, either in person or by the husband's name in this day, okay? Mm. A name is a reputation. And that name goes out into the community and it means something mm. to people who know it. Mm. And if you are an honorable, respectable man, that name will send, that name alone will send the evil one running. Hmm. Okay. And if you are a mafia chieftain, his name will also send people running. <laughs> you see? So uh, uh, if you have no name, in other words, if your name is not known, and that means your reputation is not known, mm -hmm. you see. So it has no effect in the community. So the women are re revolting uh, against men who have no reputation or standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Okay. All right. Am I making that clear? Yes, alhamdulillah. It's very clear. All right. So this is, so their revolt is genuine. It has a solid foundation in injustice. Hmm. So, but the way in which they're being misled is because there's a vacuum of leadership. Hmm. And where there's a vacuum of leadership, there's a vacuum of knowledge. Hmm. Okay. So this knowledge that we're discussing here is no longer being shed or shared by the hmm. public. Okay. Hmm. Is it? No. Nobody knows it. That's why you're talking to me. Mm. Okay. Nobody's teaching it. And the women are not hearing it. Now, the women who have the right heart, who have taken up this mantle of feminism, and when they hear somebody like me speak, they're going to say, oh, my God, that's what the problem is. Because the feminist knows that something's wrong with her feminism. Mm. Okay. And it doesn't really hit her until she reaches late middle age. Hmm. Uh, and the time for her use of her eggs is gone. Hmm. Okay. And she has no children and no grandchildren and no companion. Okay. No real man. 
Mm. Okay. I did an experiment once. I carried on because I was interested in this uh, whole business when I was practicing medicine. And I had several elder ladies because elder uh, spinsters are sicker than married women. Okay. Mm. They're not sicker than unhappy married women. Matter of fact, unhappy married women are sicker than the elder spinsters. <laughs> okay. But I had. I had uh, several elder spinsters, and I asked them one by one, as time permitted and opportunity presented. I said, "I said, would you become the second or third wife of a decent man if you had to do it all over again?" And without exception, they all said yes. Interesting. Without no, exception, no, no one likes to be alone. No, no, it's because of loneliness. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, as you grow older. Sex becomes uh, the sexual union becomes less important. Okay, the uh, for uh, the companionship is what is uppermost. Mm. Okay, you know the the fact that you're there mm. and you can be relied on, mm. that you are faithful, mm. that you have the spirit of amana. Mm. This is this is embodied in the relationship. Okay, it is matured in the relationship. That's why people turn to a respectable elder couple for advice. Okay, right. when they're confused. Okay, mm -hmm. because the respectable elder couple who still walk the hand down the street hand in hand and still have the grace that that generates happiness and joy, especially amongst the children. Okay, these people are honored. They've got something we don't. They've got something we hope we can keep. Okay, when we get that age, when we reach that age. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody sees that. Even the LGB people, mm -hmm. even they see this. Okay, they can't have it. It's not there for them. And I explain all of this in my in my new book on this matter. And from the esoteric perspective and the physical scientific perspective, psychological perspective as well. So these, uh, this matter is very, very important. But the feminist knows that she's missing something. And what she's missing is divine order. Mm. Because she's supposed to be Adam's helper, his assistant, his most important companion. As I told you when we first discussed marriage, his most important neighbor. Mm, yes. His closest neighbor. Yeah. Okay. And this is wherein the dean is perfected. And you know, that's so And if you don't that, perfect half the dean. It's hmm? so interesting that Imam Ghazali, in, in, he wrote a little bit about the rights of husbands and wives. And then he goes yes. on to say, there's not more to write because I'm going to say everything about husband and wife's rights. It'll be assumed under the chapter of the rights of one Muslim brother or one Muslim, one brother to the other brother, meaning it's the same. It's like it's the same. Yes, it's the same. You have it's to the be same. nice to them. You don't backbite them. You don't make fun of them, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. So he kind yes. of like merged the chapter of the rights of the husbands and the wives or how to treat each other. It's mm. no different from how one brother treats another brother. And that's very yes. similar to what you're saying when you're saying sahibul jambi, which is what the Yes, that's the neighbor. This is the reality. Okay. Um, and I'll show you how important it is with uh, uh, a, um, a story uh, from uh, a, a historical uh, uh, story from the Islamic uh, history. Mm. Um, you remember the what was the battle of uh, Badir? Was it where the archers left their position? Yes, yes. yes yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yes. And well, so what happened when they left their position? The prophet was wounded, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that should send a message to people that when you're given a divine order, you have to obey it. Okay, mm -hmm. if you want to protect this manifestation of the kingdom of Allah, because that's what it is. 
that's what the Gospel of Barnabas is all about. You mm. see, uh, it was about, and that was the uh, the the essence of the message of uh, of Isa. It was the kingdom of Allah. All right. He said, "Wait." He said, "Muhammad is coming. Ahmad is coming, and he will bring the kingdom." Mm. It's not. It was not Isa's job to bring the kingdom. His bring his job was to end the pretense of the Jews. All right, to them face to face. That's what they. That's what he did with them, face to face in Jerusalem. He did this, and then to announce the kingdom to come. Okay, there's profess there's prophecies about this in the Old Testament, and I've ex exhausted them in my book on the Trinity. Mm -hmm. and uh, establish this uh, as the case. So when uh, the archers left, they insulted the kingdom of Allah. They insulted Allah by through their disobedience. Mm. Okay. And when you do that, then leadership is hurt. Your, your, your uh, cause is hurt, is injured. Okay. Mm. Now, another example of this is the, the battle of Ali with Muawiyah, okay? Mm. When Ali gave the command to charge, his soldiers mm. disobeyed, mm. okay? Ali was then murdered. So they lost the Khalifa, mm. okay? The kingdom was lost with that battle mm. because then the Quraysh, everything that Muhammad had fought against, the Quraysh uh, won. They won mm. the day. Hmm. OK, with that battle. And that was the beginning of the end for Islam. I don't care about all this golden stuff. All right. It doesn't doesn't matter because spiritually that was the beginning of the end. And hmm. Muhammad said it's going to happen. Yes. Now, let me explain to you why it happened so that you get this idea of divine order. And so your listeners understand this idea of divine order, because in Moria's camp, there had to be Jews, there had to be Magi, and yes. they understood human psychology, and they and understood. They their vintage. And they this, gave him- to some degree has been talked about yes. by some scholars. Yes. What they, some of the scholars say is that, the, that when, when in the beginning, in the beginning when Muawiyah and Ali had this disagreement, yes. they come to an agreement in the daytime. And at mm. nighttime, they were fighting because when arrows are shot, you don't know, you know. You don't know, when, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. what they were saying is, some of the scholars have written on this, is that some of the Jews had, who had converted to Islam were playing both sides. Yes, and they did that with... Uh, with um... Uh, um, Aisha's army as well. So, yeah. but the point here is I want to make is different because the reason the uh, Ali's soldiers refused to charge, refused the command, they refused, uh, uh, they refused the direct order was because some very cunning Jewish magi advised Moria to hang copies of the Quran on the spear tips. You see. And Ali said, charge. He knew it was a trick, you mm. see. And what were they doing? They were playing on superstition because mm. these were new Muslims and they still had the old superstitions in their hearts. Mm. They hadn't been cleansed yet. They have, hadn't gone through this, uh, th this, this uh, Sufi process, if you will, mm. of cleansing the heart and being re-educated. So they refused to charge because they didn't want to desecrate a bunch of papers, mm. a bunch of parchment. Mm. That's what it was. It was not the Quran. The Quran's living, you see. Yeah. Uh, and so superstition is the downfall. And the lie is at the base of the superstition, you mm. see. And misunderstanding and ignorance is also at the base of the superstition. So when you disobey, the commandments of your righteous leaders, okay, then you are destroying divine order. And mm. without divine order, you cannot manifest Islam. Mm. You could talk about it to your blue in the face, but you will not manifest Islam because man, Islam is the kingdom of, of Allah on earth. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many speeches you give, you have to get into the divine yes. order. 
I don't care how many times you get up to the min minbar, okay? Mm -hmm. The divine order is what establishes Islam. I don't care how many prayers you make. The divine order is what established in Islam. And because Islam is not established, that's why you have women becoming feminazis. Mm -hmm. It's real simple. It's real simple. It's not a difficult equation. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I've reduced it to a bit of an archetype here, and I have to get going because I've got to run off to immigration now, dear brother. Um, it's very good, alhamdulillah. It was a very good session. And mm. inshallah, continue. Jazakum. Okay. May Allah bless you. May Allah make everything in your life. Alhamdulillah. Easy. May Allah. Oh, make alhamdulillah. I'm sorry. I, I'm getting a delay here. So I've interrupted your prayer. May Allah have mercy upon me. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but I just want to say thank you because certain of your listeners have uh, responded uh, to our needs uh, 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 very generously. And I just want to thank them and thank Allah for their generosity. I them too. This is wonderful. Because I it really helps us in this in this in this in this moment, Brother Muhammad Al Nas Naim is almost completing completed with the complete uh, registration process, uh, mm -hmm. so that we have a firm legal entity in the earth to carry on the knowledge that Allah has uh, given to me, and I hope that what we've just discussed is a small uh, a sample of that that knowledge. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask for well, I did. You know, one of my pre one of my previous not wives said I was sitting, you know, my hand my hands and my face at my desk, and she said, "What what's wrong with you?" And I said, "Oh, this knowledge is too much to bear." She said, "You asked for it." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and you know, so careful what you ask for. But Allah did give me some aspect of knowledge that it seems that other people do not have. So I'm tying, putting knots together, and I want to thank you for supporting me in carrying this forth to the next generation, because, uh, uh, well, it's, it's, part it's of my divine order. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, you know. then, then we, sh we shall be successful at doing this. Uh, I'm doing my best to keep on producing uh, this, or reproducing this knowledge in forms that uh, people will uh, uh, easier understand, uh, try, bringing it down from the academics, uh, super intellectual uh, level, trying to bring it down to uh, some form, uh, as I've just discussed with you, huh? mm -hmm. you see, yep. some form that allows people to uh, understand it in video lectures. So I'm very busy doing that and in, in finishing writing. So yeah, I've got to go run off the immigration here because yep. I'm still yep. stuck in Japan. Yes, inshallah. Please. Uh, okay. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brother. Wassalamu